Access to finance has become the front and centre conversation for many Australian small businesses. As a result, legislation has been introduced to establish a $2 billion securitisation fund aimed at seeing SMEs gain better access to loans. Small businesses have been squeezed as banks tighten lending across the board, but some have uh, criticised the Morrison government for this move, this securitisation fund. For tonight's Taking Stock, we're joined by Angela Vithulkas, founder of the Small Business Party, and also Shane Oliver, Chief Economist at AMP Capital. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Um, Angela, I think I've got to start with you because this issue is right at the heart of what you're campaigning about at the moment, which yes. is small business. So yes. how bad is the issue of, of loans? Well, credit, to credit. Credit's always been tough for small business, traditionally, and we've always had to um, work out that we're either going to have very expensive finance if you can get it, um, usually it'll be equipment finance where interest rates are absolutely ridiculous and by the time you've paid it all off, you have to start the merry-go-round again. Mm -hmm. um, but, and we've always you've been used to putting up equity, solid equity. So usually the only way small business could afford to borrow was to either put up their home or someone else's home as equity and, and get some money to run their business. This particular package, look, I think it's a good one. It, it doesn't go far enough, but it does give small businesses an opportunity to get access to lending and hopefully competitive lending because that's... This is, hasn't been made very clear yet. So this is money that will be available not to T1 level lenders, they're not the top banks, the next level down, the smaller lenders, who will be able to have finance available to small business with a less tough criteria, hopefully, mm -hmm. and hopefully cheaper rates. And it will be backed and guaranteed by, by the government, as I understand right. it. So less risk for them, easier access for small business, but we hope the rates are competitive, okay. if, if I've got that right. Right. A, a very important area in terms of uh, access to credit for small businesses. But Shane, uh, as I understand it, access to credit is a, is a problem for a lot of different sectors of the economy mm, right mm. now, including the mortgage market. Is this the most important area for the government to be focusing on? It's one of them. The mortgage market is the other one. But of course, they are interrelated because what's happened here is that a small business will put up the family home or, as you say, someone else's home. Mm. But of course, the banks are worried that that, uh, that collateral is falling in value. And so it may not generate the same loan um, that it would have in normal times. So that's a bit of a problem. But I think, though, I, I don't know whether this is sort of really just a Band-Aid solution, though, because the underlying problem is the tightening in credit conditions that flowed through the banking system that started with the federal regulator, APRA, and of course then moved through and got a push along by the Royal Commission last year. It wasn't so much the Royal Commission has done something, it's just exposed all the, the, the uh, I guess, difficult lending practices of the past, and that's um, made things even more difficult. So, so at the end of the day, you could argue it's really the banking system that needs to be looked at more closely. Mm -hmm. Maybe this way of ch channelling cheaper funding to the banking system may help, um, but at the end of the day, I don't know why it should be any cheaper than banks being able to raise deposits and then lending that money out. Um, so I don't know whether it's a longer term solution to the underlying problem. I did question why they thought that the rates would be cheaper for the lend because the, these mm. um, smaller lenders are still accessing having to get money wherever everyone else gets money at those same rates. Yeah. So why they yeah. would suddenly have cheaper finance available for the small businesses, I don't know. And I also question when they say that lending is tougher now and it's, and it's harder for small business mm. to get funding, it's always been hard. Mm. It has always been hard. It, it has always been hard. Is that because it's more, I mean, it's more profitable that for them to do personal loans and housing loans or less risky uh, or why, why is yeah, it that I mean, the case? Uh, banks would normally want to have a spread of their business. Okay. Um, you could argue perhaps in recent years they've swung too much towards housing. Mm. Back in the early 90s they got into trouble because they, they swung too much towards commercial property. Um, so it makes sense for a bank to spread their, um, their lending portfolio across a range of businesses. I, d I don't know why it should be any I, mean, I think back 10, 15 years ago, small businesses always found it harder to get, to get credit. Yep. Um, there is an argument that if a small lender is having to raise money in the money markets, um, then that money may be more costly than, say, if the federal government were to issue to put a guarantee over it. Mm. And you'd, you'd be borrowing at something like government bond yields, which generally are cheaper than borrowing at the, the money market rate. So that may be... If, if the government work is supplying that money up front as the guarantee in, in the story of it, but if yeah. they're only having that money available if something goes wrong, then that's where I'm, I'm not sure of the lend phase there. Yeah, it may not be any cheaper. That's right, it may right. not be any cheaper. Right. And then of course it's the matter of, I mean, years ago mm. we, should, we could be able to get an overdraft or unsecured um, funds. 
Mm. These days, you ask for unsecured funds and the bank laughs at you. Right. They have no trouble giving unsecured funds in big amounts to bigger businesses. That's right. But they yeah. struggle for some reason to <laughs> yeah. give unsecured amounts to smaller businesses where they've usually got them by the short and curlies mm. on everything mm. in their sure, life. So exactly. it's always been tough. But the, the, the cynic yeah. in me wonders yeah. whether it's they're doing something about it because there's an election coming up. <laughs> well, Certainly, probably every uh, and of course, my <laughs> goodness, but no. there is an element where you do hear more and more anecdotes that small businesses yes. have found it harder lately than yeah. it, it was always hard, but it's even harder lately. So they're shutting yeah, sure. us down yeah. faster, Shane. That they're not even yeah. getting to yeah. credit areas fast mm. like before it, it, yeah. you could get there and, and push it but now it's now know, it's hard and yeah. this comes back to this issue that the central bank governor has talked about that maybe lending standards were too lax well, at least with respect to housing two years ago now they're too the other they're, way. they've gone yeah. too yeah. far the pendulum has swung yeah. too far um, it's a huge topic we'll definitely speak to both of you again mm. about that moving on how much do couples really spend on valentine's day it might actually be less than you think in fact, the majority of couples will spend just $50 or less on their significant other this Valentine's Day. So, is it stingy or is it money smart? Angela, what do you think? I think uh, tying back into the uh, credit crunch where the banks <laughs> have probably got that on the questionnaire of, you know, along with your Foxtel expense, how much are you yeah, spending yeah. on Valentine's yes, presents? Exactly. So that's why we're all going, only $50, only $50. <laughs> uh, I think people are, I feel like it's in the same category as the wedding day spend. Suddenly anything you buy on Valentine's Day is 100 times more expensive than any other day, including yeah, roses or anything associated with it. <clears throat> And no one likes to get gypped on that day. So I think we're all a little bit of a wake up. But it's interesting how if you're more in love in the early days, you'll spend more money. I, the stars oh, are still there. Yes, what, yes. we're we getting cynical on our own age? Eh? Is that what's happening? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to buy my own Valentine's present. Yeah, I'll have that too. <laughs> um, yeah, I did notice the ones who were spending more was kind of the younger 18 to 24 mm. category. Um, that, that's where I was. That's where I was spending up big on Valentine's yeah. Day. Then I worked out that it cost 50% more to get a restaurant that's, booking yeah, that yeah, night. Maybe four all the day after. You've got yeah. a bit of four course set menu in the whole... Yeah, the whole and then old age <laughs> cynicism kicked in and then I where did this Valentine's Day thing come from anyway? Yeah, just some right. some just American who? marketing <laughs> exercise like Black yep. Friday or Cyber Monday. You know, I could get things... Yep. Right don't... now, Shane, every florist in Australia is having a heart attack yeah. to say that. No, you know what? The silly sure. thing well, is they are still... Other days. Yeah, yes. they are Grow still them. run off their <laughs> feet. They are run off their feet, florists, which is, I mean, well, it's like quite Two incredible. weeks ago, Thursday two weeks ago, it was Hug an Economist Day. No one came up to me and gave me a hug, so why should I be so spending bad. Bad. I'm sure you were in the newsroom. We didn't know. I'm <laughs> well, I wasn't that particular Hashtag, day. are you OK? Who heavily well, promotes I, that? I, it left me um, a bit shattered. And I only found out about this because... Is he just was... standing outside the RBA, arms open? Well, I was just no, standing no out there waiting for a hug. I'm sorry, an oh. economist with feelings. This is what you're saying, an economist with feelings. Oh, okay. What it's was the, the date? I'll write it down for next year. Write down the calendar for next year, Shane. I'll have you on. Anyway, who knows where that so can go. Now, oh, speaking of um, customs we bring from offshore, tipping, it's a big part of the service economy in the US, as you know, but should foreigners be expected to stump up? Well, an Aussie recently recounted a time when she was locked in a cab because she did not add to the bill with the tip. Um, quite an extreme case, but it does bring up the fact that this is, is quite an American import and, it, I, you know, um, I've never kind of welcomed it necessarily in Australia. Yeah. I don't know why we had to have that custom. It kind yeah. of got very big for a while. I think it's faded a bit in Australia. I think it general. has too, mm. and I, th I think in America it's justified to some degree because the minimum wage is so low. In some states it can be $8, $9. Here Six, it's, seven, yeah. I yeah. forget what it is here, $18, something like yeah. that, 20 21 and, and so therefore, you know, it's still relatively low, but they're still getting paid a, a, a better wage. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to think, well, maybe it was because it was a service economy, but I have had this experience myself. I went to a restaurant in New York, New York once, and the service was atrocious. Yeah. You know, it took forever to get the menu, and then it took forever to get the meal, like you're talking about an hour. Yeah, and you still have to tip, a right? And then we said, I, I OK, this is meant to be a service economy. Oh, yeah. There was yeah. no service here, <coughs> no tip. Yeah. And the waiter went bonkers. Yes. And it went absolutely crazy. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, quite clearly, the tip is not related to service. Yes. Whereas I do think in Australia, you go to a restaurant, in Australia and if I get good service I will give a tip yep it won't be 20% like they expect in sure. the US but it will be um, a reason you just got to say hello to me and get the stuff on time and the food's good I'm yeah, happy yeah. Yep. you get a tip um, but don't I don't be a florist on Valentine's Day <laughs> <laughs> well, well you never know tip. I might be buying flowers on Valentine's Day but 
probably less than fifty dollars worth hopefully <laughs> <laughs> but but it is literally only for for good service so mm. I, I don't think it does its job in America I, I would rather those the workers who get the tips get paid more yep. I'd rather have a higher minimum wage I think that's a fairer way to go about it you do the job you get paid the salary mm. um, but I, I, I don't think it works in the sense that it actually provides a better service. And well, so I certainly some of those want bartenders in the States or in the service industry are making thousands of dollars a week in wages in tips, in tips. Yeah. on top yeah. because of that service and the theatre of it. Here mm. the tips have gone out, especially in hospitality, because of tap. I was going to say tap that's and go. Yeah. Tap, when that came tap in, is they, the, they dropped off. You it, know, it is the absolute villain. But that's absolutely the stupidity absolute on the part of the, uh, the restaurant owners and what have you. They, they could have said, do you want to tap uh, a tip? If they arrange the electronic system appropriately, you can can do On that. behalf of the restaurant and cafe owners of the world, Shane, <laughs> you know who's the stupid criminal here? It's the banks who design this software yeah. and don't take yeah. the feedback from us which said, how about the tip function and why isn't it up front? But some of them yeah. do. Well, some, some of them, of them do, but it's a bit still like you can just do yeah. what There's I'm doing. Like, no thanks. You can just do whatever no thanks and like no steps steps anymore. If they're no. given the opportunity up front, they will, but when there's too many steps, yes, I agree. I think it's interesting, this whole kind of idea that it's an American import, which it for mm. sure is, because if you look elsewhere in the world, somewhere like Japan, tipping is considered to be incredibly bad manners. So why yeah. is it that, uh, yeah, you that we... Quite, you know, that's refused right. if you so can't handle the it's, the... it's the Anglo... It's American TV. We're all watching too much American TV. Too much TV. TV. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> Float on from there. Mm. Mm. I, I think service should be done because that is your job. Mm. I mm. love the idea of tips, and, and in my early years in, in the cafe and restaurant world, I used to always say proudly to the staff, I can get more, you know, double the tips of you because watch the skill that it takes <laughs> to do that. Mm. And there's a skill in making and one sure day I'll go into politics yeah, yeah, and make yeah, this yeah, work yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't translate so well. But um, it, it, it's all to do with the service and your attitude. If you are welcoming, if you make sure that the customer is the most important priority, then that, that is your job, and that's why you should be doing it. Now, mm. tips should be. It's, it's a welcome, but these days, you know, it, it's almost unheard of in, in the daytime economy. Tips mm. are almost yes. unheard of now. Good point, mm. daytime yeah, economy. Daytime economy. Very, very interesting. That's my well, words of wisdom. No, we loved getting across those topics with you. Thank you very much. Angela Vathoukas, founder of the Small Business Party. Shane Oliver, AMP Capitals, uh, Chief Economist. Thank you very much.